Hey, I'm Joseph Cosma, and welcome to 10 Minute Discipleship. And today I want to talk to you about living a life of more than existence. Um, many people live lives of existence, but existing is not the highest calling you could live. Lying in a hospital bed on a respirator, unresponsive, getting all your meals through a tube, technically, that is living. But I wouldn't exactly call that the highest form of living that you could. Sometimes dog poo exists in the backyard, but being dog poo, I wouldn't say is the highest form of living or a high calling at all. And as a Christian, so many people exist, but few live the highest calling for their life. So few live what they were created for, a life of obedience. And there's a huge misconception that constantly doing something and attaching God's name to it or Christ's name to it or the church's name to it, is obedience, when in fact, most of the time, it's actually just busyness. It's extremely easy to wake up each day and to go through all the motions and ask God, when are you going to move on my behalf? I've been doing this prayer thing. I've been reading my Bible. I only watch Christian TV, and I only do Christian radio. God, you got to move on my behalf. you got to do it now. Do it. How about now? How about you do it now? And while the Western society is very time-orientated and very time-driven, the rest of the world is not. In fact, where Jesus grew up, it was not a time-orientated culture whatsoever. And, and the kingdom of heaven does not operate on human arguments. It doesn't operate on human understanding. And it doesn't operate on human timing. In fact, there is no time in heaven. God works outside of the realms of time altogether. Now, just like in Matthew 24, there are appointed times. That's like the coming of the Son of Man. It's an appointed time where only the Father knows. It can't be changed. That is an appointed time. It's going to happen. But while heaven doesn't operate necessarily on time in a human standard, there is a timing of heaven. And if you want to see heaven invade earth, if you want to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit on a daily basis, if you want God to open doors that no man can close, you have to walk in the timing of heaven. And the timing of heaven reacts directly with, you got it, obedience. It's not anybody else's obedience. It is only your obedience. And when I think about perfect obedience, when I think about the Bible, I think about, you got it, Russell Crowe, or Noah. Yeah, Noah. Uh, he worked on the ark uh, 120 years, or some scholars would say between 50 and 75 years. Anyway, let's just round that out to a long time to work on a boat. Any way you look at it, every day waking up, working on a boat, that is an extremely long time. You see, he built the, the ark exactly to the blueprints of heaven. And in fact, in Genesis 6.22, it says Noah did everything exactly as God commanded. And if he didn't, that would have been absolutely ridiculous. It would have been ridiculous for him to work 30 years and then just wake up and say, God, I've been doing this every day. This is, this is crazy, man. When are you going to send me that rain stuff from the sky? When? Are you going to send me some of them animals, big guy? You see, if God sent rain before obedience had been completed, it would not have been an answer to prayer. In fact, it actually would have been total destruction. And it was exact obedience to the Lord that guaranteed safety through the worst storm that the world has ever seen. In fact, how many times have you wanted God to act on your behalf, but you haven't acted first when God has already told you to? Many times, people don't realize that if God acted before you acted, it would actually lead to your downfall. 
Many people say, God, when are you going to send me these ministry opportunities that I've been wanting for the longest time when, when God's saying, have you taken care of that hidden sin? Have you taken care of that secret sin that nobody sees except you? Because if you don't, your ministry won't last. And in fact, it'll compromise everything that I would send your direction. God, when are you going to provide me with money? When are you going to pour out the floodgates of heaven so I can be so, so giving? God, when are you going to do it? When are you going to pour that out? When God's actually asking you, have you been obedient in the giving that I've asked you to? Even just a little giving right now. Because if you continue holding on to the little money that you have, so tight-fisted, you know, it's actually impossible for me to fit anything else inside your hand. God, when are you going to send me a woman? When are you going to send me my husband? Uh, but why would God punish someone else when you're not living a life of maturity and integrity now? In fact, every season of our life has an obedience to be answered to. And you have two awesome choices. You can agree with God and get busy on the area that he just wants to lovingly correct in your life. Or you can say, Lord, what the heck is going on here? Lord, 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 Lord. But you see, it's not just calling the Lord's name. No, it's never been just about calling the Lord's name because Luke 6, 46 says, why do you call me Lord, Lord? That's really important when two things are repeated like that. Lord, Lord, there's a, a super importance. You know, super importance. So these people are calling, Lord, Lord, and you don't do what I say. For As for everyone who comes to me and hears my words and put them into practice, I'll show you what it's like. They're like a man building a house who, who dug deep and laid a foundation on rock. And, and when flood came, the torrent struck that house, but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice, it's like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. You know, originally Chicago was built in an area that was swampy and muddy and yucky. It was just horrible stuff. And, you know, there was a decision to be made to add sewage. But when these sewage tunnels, they tried to add them, they, they came in and had to raise the grade of the ground four to five feet and in areas up to eight feet because everything was sinking underneath it. You know, it's impossible to build really high things when everything is sinking underneath you. But once you build on a sure foundation, you can build skyscrapers. You can build things that can be seen for miles around you. And the only way that you can build things that are sure to last and that others can be seen is to build on a sure foundation, the life of obedience in Jesus Christ. It's the same thing that works for those in the workplace. Many times people who are promoted are not the workers who hate everything and are grumbling and complaining. They don't get everything that the boss says and then do their own will. It's the fact, it's the people who are obedient and the small things that are put right in front of them. The people that show that they can be faithful with the things that are put right in front of them find themselves in places of leadership. In the same way with Jesus, he pours out fresh revelation and wisdom on those who are walking in obedience. But the sad thing is, there's really no such thing as half obedience. And in Numbers 20, Moses gives in us an awesome example of what that's like when the Israelites are complaining and, and they're at their worst and there's no water for the whole community. And God speaks to Moses to speak to a rock for water to come out to it, water to come. And when, when Moses he doesn't exactly do exactly as, as what God commanded. And Mo, right there at this point, and then Moses raised his arms. He struck the rock twice with his staff, and water gushed out. And the community and the livestock, livestock drank. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you didn't trust me enough to honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelites, you will not bring this community 
into the land I give them. And the sad truth is, partial obedience is not obedience at all. It did produce a miracle. Actually, most Christians would be ecstatic with water coming out of a rock. They would create a whole ministry about water coming out of a rock. Have you seen this? This is really awesome. But the fact is, it was partial obedience, and, and it really wasn't obedience in God's sight. You see, what it actually served to do was that God was faithful to present Moses with what the best actually looked like. He presented him with the best that he had for his life, to walk into a land that was promised, flowing with milk and honey. But partial obedience only let him see what was promised to him from a distance. He actually didn't get to walk in it himself. Somebody else had to come behind him and pick up the slack from the obedience that he was supposed to do in the first place. You see, you only get to see those things from a distance. You only get to see those things that were promised from you from a distance when you walk in partial obedience. And I think that has to be one of the saddest things in life when you see at the end of your life everything that could have been absolutely the best, everything that could have been promised to you, every possibility, but somebody actually had to come and pick it up where you left off because of that slack in partial obedience when God wanted you to have the best the whole time. Actually, partial obedience isn't obedience. In, in James 4, 17, it actually says, if anyone then knows the good that he ought to do and he doesn't do it, it's a sin for them. In fact, it's just put that simple. It's literally, you either do what God wants or you're walking in rebellion. It's actually a sin. And God wants you just to walk in the fullness of who He is. He wants you to walk in the best of who He is. He always wants you to walk in the realms, the more, the things of miracles right now. Um, the things where He just talked about, you'll do things like this and greater things. That's what God is calling to you. Miracles, those things, that's the base level. Those aren't the greatest things. God wants you to walk in the fullness of who He is right now in a life of obedience. But the good news is it's not too late. See, in that timing aspect, when God looks at it, you haven't missed it. He just wants you to go back to the last obedience that God has for you right now. The last obedience, and you just pick up right where you left off. You apologize, and you just go full force in what God has for you because He still has the best from your life. But the most dangerous thing is to think the things of the Lord are only relegated to gifted people, the big people, because the biggest thing would be that it excuses you from growing in the goodness that God has when God wants every person to grow in the amazing things that He has right in front of you, in a life of obedience, in a life sold out to Him, in a life of just doing the one small thing that He has for you right now, and then He is sure and faithful to open up those big things and the next steps. And even though you can't see the things right in front of you, God is faithful and true to open up those next steps when you walk in simple acts of obedience. And I just pray right now that you just put your hand, you just put your ears, you just put your mind to the things that God has called you to right now. Those small things, whether it be what you take in your body or just speaking to the people around you. Because God wants to use you every single day and God wants you to just walk in the obedience that He has right now and only what He has for you right now. I'm Joseph Cosma for 10-Minute Discipleship. God bless you and have an awesome day. Rock it!